Now, and you've been credited uh, in the media, or if that's the right word, for launching off or kicking off an attack on the Prime Minister today. I'll just bring up a tweet uh, that uh, you've put out today where you're saying when the country you lead is on fire, you have an obligation to stick around and sort it out, or at least put the right policies in place before you clock off. But this guy's just yeah, in denial, that, on holiday, in denial. So you're attacking the Prime Minister of this country for taking some time off with his family because there's some bushfires on. Don't you think that's below the belt? Um, I'm attacking the Prime Minister of this country from leaving the country while it's not just facing some bushfires, Chris. There's a bushfire to the north of the city I'm in, Sydney. Yeah. So I'm stretching all the way, stretching all the way from Lithgow, 70 mile fire front, all the way across yeah. to the central coast. At times, that fire has been sparking up to 70 metres in height. Yeah, it's a large it bushfire in Rugged National almost, Park. Fires have consumed almost 3 million hectares of, of the country. We've lost over 720 homes. Six people have tragically lost their lives. Big parts of the Blue Mountains, townships in the Blue Mountains are feeling directly under threat. Just imagine if we traded the words bushfires and the loss of 700 odd homes, six lives, millions of hectares. Imagine if there was another cause for this. You know, if you said this was being caused by terrorism or civil unrest. Well, you would um, never allow the Prime Minister to leave yet. Yeah. He thinks it's OK to go for a week holiday. I disagree. I don't think he should. He should stay here and fix it. If not, solve it. Ensure that the resources are there for our firefighters. The policies are in place before he goes on holidays. The lives you're talking about have been lost were lost uh, weeks, if not months ago. Uh, the bushfires uh, continue to burn mainly in national parks. Australia always has bushfires in summer. You're suggesting a, a prime minister we, we, shouldn't we, be able we, to have we, a family we've never holiday? Seen, we haven't seen. We have this fire season started in early September. In northern um, New South like Wales, it did. When, when it always, New, New South Wales. The, we've the northern New South Wales people. fire season is, is a spring and early summer fire season. You know do, that. Do you know, Chris, you know, Chris the, the Victorian Fire Commissioner, um, uh, Chief Fire Commissioner, about a decade ago, um, went and had dinner in the middle of the then fire season. Uh, put, up, put a gap in her diary and had dinner. That was attacked on the front pages of the Herald Sun and the right-wing media as her abandoning her post in the middle of a fire season. Well, I think it was attacked. I think, catastrophic, I think all media had bushfires, and the prime minister's gone on holiday for a week. The prime I minister. I don't think that's right. The Prime Minister is not in charge of the bushfire response in New South Wales. I mean, I would have thought the, uh, the prime minister is entitled to have some time off with his family. Well, I think the prime minister is entitled to have some time off with his family, unless we're facing. A, a, an emergency of the scale that we're facing at the moment. Do you know, there's a key asset, right? One of the key assets, one of the big aerial water fire, firefighting um, assets that we have, we've had to send over from the East Coast to WA to deal with the catastrophic fires they have in WA. It means we haven't got the assets we want and need in New South Wales to deal with these catastrophic fires. And rather than have the Prime Minister find the funds, direct the political attention to it and get those assets in place, he's gone on holidays. Do I don't think it's good enough. I don't think it's good enough. We can agree to disagree on this, Chris. But while we're facing an unprecedented catastrophe like this so early in summer, he should be on deck fixing it. Do you ever worry that you're inflaming hysteria and panic using things, uh, terms like un unprecedented uh, uh, crisis? Uh, uh, all, all sorts of terminology. Greg, Greg Mullins, you, Greg Mullins, the fire commissioner in New yeah, South Wales, well, exactly, former fire the, commissioner with decades the, of experience, yeah, is saying exactly the yeah, same thing. Yeah, the same. The same applies to him. Do you ever worry that you, you're doing all of this because you're trying to push a climate change, a political message, on the back of horrible bushfires? Chris, while there are flames 70 metres in height and a 70-kilometre fire front coming down on townships in, in the Blue Mountains, while they're coming down on the central coast, while it's coming down on the Hawkesbury in Sydney, um, having politicians say, devote the resources, provide the funds, um, uh, accept that bad policy decisions on climate have aggravated this situation. How have they done that? Um, How have Australian of policies that's aggravated the right this? Thing to do. So of every that's the right so, thing so is it is this the new normal in Australia now? Every time there's a bushfire, we're going to have politicians of the green left and activists like Greg Mullins use them to run a climate change political attack. 
Chris, Chris, I mean, on what basis do you call Greg Mullins an activist? The man has spent because three he's and a half decades or so, he, three well, and a half decades, leading, leading the key firefighting agency in New South Wales. He's on the Climate he has never Council. Before come forward. He's on the Climate he's Council. Before... He's a climate activist. He's on he, the climate he is, council. He is an extremely experienced firefighter that who's we used know. that experience and said and said that climate policies, climate change is making us far more vulnerable to major unprecedented fires like we're seeing at the moment. He's using his expert knowledge to actually draw politicians to the table and try and get them to help fix this. That's not an activist. That's just well, a man using his expertise um, and his experience to draw politicians to, to the table to actually try and help fix it. David Shoebridge, we know about his uh, firefighting experience, we acknowledge that, but he's also a climate activist. Uh, he's been on the Climate Council, a very activist group. He is a climate activist. There's all sorts of people who fight fires and have but fire see, expertise, Chris, if, if, and they if, have all if, sorts if, of political views, and he's very much an activist. And I just would have thought that at well, a so time Chris, of Chris, crisis, you're, you're as you deny... call no, at a time of crisis, we should be calm and rational about how we address a bushfire situation rather than try and use it to push a political agenda on climate change. Well, in a time of crisis, we need our political leaders to be clear-sighted. I agree with you that there shouldn't be a panic. I agree, though, that there should be an acknowledgement of the scale of the problem. And just simply saying this is like ordinary bushfires, Chris, I think you're ignoring the scale of the problem and that you're ignoring also the fact that we're just like a fortnight into summer. And, and, and the Bureau of Meteorology are saying we're not going to have any decent dumps of rain until April. We're running out of water. We're running out of resources. We're running out of um, just the sheer physical energy that's needed for this volunteer bushfire crew in large part to deal it's with a, this. It's a very, uh, it's and, a very and, and, severe and we've got drought. A prime minister, and we've got a Prime Minister who's decided this is the time to go on holiday for a week. I it, don't think it's the time to go on holiday for the week. It's the time for him to sit down and make sure we've got the resources and the support in place because otherwise, I mean, heaven, heaven knows what will happen in the next two and a half to three months. It is a very severe drought indeed. David Shoebridge, I wonder if you can tell us when and where you're going on holiday. Uh, yeah, I can, tell you where, um, I, I can tell you where I'm going on holiday. I'm going holiday just to the north of Sydney. Um, I'm taking a week off there with my, uh, with my family um, and then I'm going just to the south of Jarvis Bay for about five or six days as well. And, and if there are bushfires... Um, I'll be contactable. If there, if, I will be if, contactable. If there are bushfires um, raging, um, you won't be going? Uh, well, no, no, Chris, I will be taking that time off. And, I, and, and I'm glad to say that I'm not the Prime Minister having to deal with this appalling, <laughs> uh, appalling catastrophe. I, I don't have the purse strings that could provide the funds that are needed right now for the volunteer firefighters. I don't have access to the, the tens of millions of dollars needed to provide those, um, those additional assets to the firefighting crew. But I can tell you up until then, I will be working to try and make sure that those politicians who do have access to those funds put their hand in their pocket and provide the resources so as we're safe as we can be.